Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sarasota Tim, coming to you from my beautiful camper, a.k.a. the Crasher. I'm going to make a pot of coffee. Welcome to Evening Chat. We'll try to figure out some things to talk about. I got a couple of ideas, and you're not going to believe it. <laughs> you're like, oh, boy. So let's plug this coffee pot in. You know, it's great. It's great living in a camper. Uh, it's great living in a 25 FKBS. Hey, if you'd like to get one of these, by the way, if you've seen my videos, uh, it's the best camper on the market, best floor plan, bar none, if you want to pull something. I mean, I'll stack any amount of money that you would like this as much as anything. You can buy this camper that retails for $43,000, where I bought mine, uh, for thirty-five thousand uh, dollars, that's what I hear. I can't verify that, but I've been told that there is one of these for sale for thirty-five grand. And let me tell you, folks, without splitting hairs, if you're going to buy a new camper and you're buying anything just under thirty feet, and you want a dual axle and a thirteen-five AC unit, solar on and on and on, you're not going to find a better value than that. I assure you. I have no regrets on mine. I wouldn't take 35 for this one. And I'd be making money if I did because I've lived in it for a year. I've, it's paid me $1,500 a month, $1,200 a month with utilities to live in this over what it's cost me to pay for like an RV a parking spot. I've put another 12, at least a thousand dollars. I've put 12 to 15 grand back in my pocket rebate of what I gave for this. So if I sold it for 35, I'd make money. If I sold it for 30, I'd make money. I'd break even. But I wouldn't sell it. Hell to the no. So anyway, moving on. One. Two, three, and that'll cover. Uh, oh, how much is going to cover? <laughs> I got this new coffee maker. I'm trying to figure it out. Anyway, um, enough about the camper. The camper is not for sale because the camper is my home, and the camper is something I'm going to be using to travel in and travel in soon. Because I just did a little, a little trip. And let me tell you, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Putting this baby in a nice spot in a nice part of the country was everything. I'm going to make a little bit stronger. That'll, that'll be two cups of coffee with three tablespoons. And let me just put a little extra that will absorb in the grounds and the uh, filter. All right, let's turn that on. I love that new coffee maker. 12 bucks at Walmart. Makes about 12 cups of coffee. I don't know how I ever live without it compared to that little bitty thing I had. So, the camper, you've seen it. It's got these theater seats, this, the bedroom. You've seen it all before. This wonderful... Uh, mirror here, uh, dresser, or whatever you call it, closet, dual, dual sink, um, medicine cabinet. Now, while that's being made, that coffee, let's come down here and talk. <clears throat> talk about what's going on. So, This camper is, uh, is my home, as everybody knows, and I have decided that I'm going to keep it for even longer than I thought, which was forever. <laughs> I really do um, like the fact that I have made some very, <clears throat> very smart decisions in my book 
on my recent purchases uh, to set up my life for the retirement years of my life. I have a home for 40, <laughs> actually for 30 grand because I, that's all I paid um, with my old camper. I mean, we're going to buy a house for $30,000. I bought a, um, a, a truck to pull it with. I had a truck and I bought, I bought a brand new 24 three quarter ton Ford 250 with an amazing, an amazing um, motor in it that um, has this package on it that just happens to be, I just happened to fall into it. I did a little studying as one of the best values on the market in 2024 for a super duty or heavy duty uh, truck <clears throat> over half ton, super duty, heavy duties. These trucks can run seventy-five dollars to $150,000 easily. And uh, I found a great deal. And because I had a truck that absolutely was a super big market for, for more towing and other uh, areas, my Tundra was good, in, was good in this market, but it, could only, it only had limitations. You know, like I've got limitations with my truck versus a 450 or a 350 or with the diesel, you know, but what I got for what I live in, I'm more than good. <clears throat> and then what pays for itself, a little Honda I bought that um, I really like to travel in, to go golfing in, to run around in, uh, to keep the, the truck just as a utility vehicle, it's, it's kind of like if I bought a big Class A, here's the way I look at it. If I bought a big Class A diesel pusher, you know, they run 250 to $2 million, right? Sky's the limit. If I bought a big Class C that was more than 22 feet, because those are, you know, with, if you take out the engine and the driving part, you got a little bitty tiny camper there. So you'd have to go to one of those big, C's. They run 150, a couple of hundred grand. If you buy a Class B, one of these little vans, like an Amazon van, they get a hundred thousand dollars, 150, even 200 for those Mercedes, thousand dollars. <throat> so you take this camper that cost 40 grand. You take that truck I bought that cost 60 grand. That's 100 grand compared to all those other RVs I talked about. And I can separate them. I can leave the home. I can take the home. I have a nice home. I've got plenty of square feet in here. I've got a truck. I can tow with it. I can go off-roading with it. I can use it as a daily driver. I can go traveling in it. I can go camping with it. I can haul, <clears throat> excuse me, I can haul things. I can help somebody else. I can move furniture. I can do a lot of things <clears throat> with it. And together, they cost 100 And I think what I know, like a Class B costs 100 grand, or a cheap, small Class C is going to cost you 100 grand more. And a Class A, forget it. Forget diesel, just a regular gasser. And that's a big albatross. This is the best combo I think I could have ended up with. <clears throat> part of it was study and part of it was luck. Here's the window sticker of the truck. Like I said, this, this thing I'm sitting in is one of the best built, uh, best value pull behind campers. And I pulled it across the country uh, back and forth. I've pulled it up to uh, Georgia several times, the north end of Florida a few times, and uh, another time in Georgia recently, and now all the way down to the Keys and back. And I'm sitting in it right now, and every single light works, every single spigot works, everything is working, the tires still look brand new, it looks brand new, it tows like a dream. And wherever I go, I'm home. 
And <clears throat> if I want to go jump in that truck and go anywhere I want, I've got a heavy duty, solid, brand new truck with three years full bumper to bumper warranty. Now, what am I getting at? Okay, you got a hundred grand retail for these two units. I didn't pay anywhere near that because what I gave for the Wolf Pup camper I traded in on this and paid a difference of 30. Now we're down to 90. And then the difference that I got for my Tundra, of which I traded for for my uh, Forerunner and got a super deal. And it was actually a subscriber friend of mine that is the manager of the dealership that I bought it from. It was pre-owned and I went down to a two wheel drive, but a bigger truck that could tow this. And I towed it across the country um, with the Tundra. That's when I discovered that it can do it, but it ain't going to do it in the Rocky Mountains, and it's not going to do it. Uh, you know, I mean, when I climb some of the very high mountains leaving Bullhead City, Arizona, to get to Kingman, you know, it tested the limits of the tundra. Flat road, highway, it was fine. But if I ever needed to pull it off the pavement, onto any kind of a sandy area, or down into a campground somewhere with that two-wheel drive and those city slicker tires... No way. So the Ford 250 that's a tow truck was the, was the answer. And I got killer trade-in money. Or I'll put it to you this way. The cash difference for the truck after the Tundra trade-in was a deal. I'll put it to you this way, folks. You forget about what you've given for your previous car, you know, if you've had it for a couple of years. That, that pain is over. And you only concern yourself with what you got to pay difference for your new items. So that $100,000 that this and that retail for, I gave half. Half of that. And now I have a hundred plus thousand dollars worth of okay now i'm not talking about the car the honda car that's separate <clears throat> that it, i got a super smoking deal for what deal there is on hondas i got the best honda there is i'm not bragging i'm just saying these models this truck i got is not the most expensive it is not the best to some people it is the best value bar none for the equipment and the and the uh, what it has on it and what it can do and this camper while it's nowhere near as expensive as a class a or other campers or longer campers or air streams and, and those kind of things it is probably the best value in my opinion and the best floor plan i've ever seen and now i've got with the new car, the Honda, now I'm back up to the 100. Okay? But it includes a sidecar that's also brand new with full factory warranty. So now, when I claim to be a minimalist, and I am, I am not one with one car. I am not one with a small camper. I am not one with one pair of shoes. I am not a self-prescribed minimalist, and I'm not a miser. I'm not a cheapskate, and I'm not living like the majority of people out there that own an older car, a big fine home that's 20, 30 years old, that's costing them a fortune to live in with insurance, um, maintenance, HOAs, utilities, repairs, uh, interest rate, mortgage, all of that. Plus, they may have cars that are costing more in maintenance that are older, or maybe they got a new car. Maybe they got five credit cards they're in debt with and all kinds of streaming services and all that. And that's fine if they want to do that. That's the masses. That's the majority of the world. 
I have gotten mine down to where the rent, wherever I go with something like this, is less than half of what an apartment costs in today's money. I have no debt at all. And I have a side hustle and my Social Security. And I'm doing just fine. And I'm fully covered with insurance. 100% health insurance. And my automotive and RV insurance. Everything is covered, including me. And everything is paid. And life is good. And so this affords me to make some decisions. One, I'm by myself. Two, my, uh, my extra money that I want to spend to travel and do other things that people are having to do that are just living in one place, you know, going to their prison job and paying for everything because they got mountains of debt. I am way, way happier this way. Um, this, this is the life, folks. And this is what I'm sharing so that if you are getting close to a retirement age, that you can get a check coming in called Social Security. And then you can also make money like I do on a side hustle, doing something that you enjoy doing that's less than 40 or 50 hours a week like I'm doing. And you put those two together and you can get yourself out of debt and you may want to do, you know, like millions of people, tens, hundreds of thousands anyway, that are doing the RV life. And if you have a spouse or a significant other and you want to get a fifth wheel with the diesel Ford or Chevy or Ram and you want to live in that and pay a very low cost, you want to buy a piece of land, you want to sell your house and buy a little lot and put your, 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 make you a home base and do that with your, with your camper. You want to buy a mobile home. Like all these people around me, there's acres and acres in Sarasota and Bradenton of mobile home parks here in South Florida. There are in Bullhead City, Arizona too, all over Arizona. And because of the dry climate, they don't rust or anything. And you can buy those for 15 grand, 10 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, but you're not spending 450 grand, which is the average price of a home, or 300 and something grand for a villa or in a condo, or 250 grand for a one bedroom efficiency uh, something that you've got to stay there, that it's, it's your ball and chain to you. You can't move it around, and it's subject to the weather. You live in Tornado Alley. You live in Hurricane Central. You live in Earthquake uh, earthquake Zone. So I have eschewed all of that. And my life continually, by the grace of God, comes together of what I wanted to do, of what I visualized having in a retirement life, to God saying... I'm going to kick it up a notch and give you even more and make it even better than you could even have imagined. And that's exactly what's happening. Folks, I am so stoked right now with what's going on. Um, I really do know that at 66 years old next month, I could potentially only see this world not near as long if I live to be an older person as someone that's 50 or 55, much less 40. They have a lot of years in front of them, assuming they live to be the average age of 73. And if they get lucky and, and go to 80, I mean, there's not much quality of life for most people in those deteriorating years from 70, uh, 67, uh, or 70, I should say, onward. I mean, you're really kind of going down and winding down. Sure, there's exceptions. There's always a Jack Lane. There's always the exception. There's lots of them, but not for the masses. You know, your life will end. 
you will die and go to be with the Lord one day. And it's a lot closer than you think if you're 60 years old. And as, as we all know, at 60 or 65 or almost 66 like me, time goes like this now. Yesterday, I was in high school. Yesterday, my kids were small. Yesterday, I was uh, passing out um, crackers at Publix. I mean, time is flying. There is no time to waste. No matter how much money you got, you can't buy any extra of it. You can't save it. You get the same amount no matter how much you make or how educated you are as everybody else. That's one thing that we got equal is time until your last breath. So what will you do? Will you continue to uh, squander it, <clears throat> fly by the seat of your pants? Don't worry about it. Too, too early to tell, too young to plan. Uh, your future's in the past. <laughs> it's an old saying of mine. Or will you start thinking like I did at 60? Because at 60, I was just chomping at the bit to be 62 to get my Social Security. I just was counting down the months. And I knew that I had to wait that I could do it three months prior to my birthday. And believe me, I was thinking not that I would quit working. I never knew even about YouTube at that point. Well, that's not true. I've been a YouTuber since, I think, 2017. But um, I never knew what I would do to make money, but I knew I would have to keep, you know, maybe even doing what I did before, uh, before the pandemic. But, you know, God opened up the doors for me to do something else. But I had totally planned on, like, man, just think, getting a grand or two or almost $2,000 every month plus before I even go to work and earn some money if I made another couple of grand a month which is like falling out of bed four thousand dollars a month and I've never really been a person with debt if I can be like no debt no car payments and you know I, I did roommating for a dozen years where I only paid five hundred dollars a month you know this this fifteen hundred $2,000 a month for rent. I don't even compute that. I would never do that. I would never pay that kind of money. And then 30 days later, they're standing there like this, lay a bunch of hundreds in my hand again. And you only got 30 days to come up with another 15, 15 or 20 of them with the utilities. No. I mean, who does that? I know everybody, right? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know how they have anything left over. So I figured, man, when I get that Social Security and I can still work doing something, I was going to I was going to polish out headlights. I'm an entrepreneur. <clears throat> I was going to go around with my uh, forerunner at the time. And I was going to have um, some battery operated ones with extra batteries. And I learned a technique to polish. <coughs> Excuse me. I got it to polish out headlights. Take a look next time you, you walk around a parking lot at the store and look at how many cars' headlights are completely dull. And at night, they can't even see out of them. They're, it's crazy. And, and the manufacturer just keeps putting them on cars. But I know a way to get them really clear again. And I was going to do that, and it was going to take me 30 minutes and... Once I got some referrals going and got my cards going and I went out and hustled and elicited business directly like I did all my life, I was going to build that business. And I was going to make pretty good money, you know, working for myself. And I would have that guaranteed deposit every month called Social Security. Man, I was going to be living, living large. I mean, it's just me, right? I only had me to support. And uh, as it worked out, it, it worked out even better. It worked out even better. So now, wherever I go and video my life and do what I do, I get paid to do it because that's 
my side hustle. And I've got my automatic deposit of my Social Security every month. So I don't have to worry about i got to stick around here to work 15 to 25 hours a week, which I'd be happy to do if I didn't do what I'm doing to still make it a, a game changer. I'd still have a lot of time off to do some traveling or whatever I wanted to do. Maybe I could pick up a job as a camp host. I thought about that too. You know, you could stay rent free and live different places uh, around the country. Uh, go to Quartzsite, Arizona. And I uh, always wanted to visit there too, where all the RVs converge and video and do different things and meet people because I'm an extrovert. I just had this, this independence, this free bird plan in life. <clears throat> and guess what? It's arrived. I have it. I absolutely have it. Um, I'm not exercising as much of it as I think that I might or just keep sampling a little bit. I've taken these few trips over my life. I've taken several of them, you know, in the motorcycle and stuff when I had my, my business. But the traveling is not anything new to me. It's in my blood. So back to the, the monies and the, and the vehicles and the RV. So I've got like less than $100,000 invested in a 2024 home, a 2024 truck, and a 2024 uh, get around Sioux Honda car. That's pretty amazing uh, with, the, with the trade ups that I've done. You know how people made a lot of money on real estate? They've bought and sold one home, two homes, five homes, six or eight homes. I know people that have, and their wealth is, is up there because of real estate. You know how many people I know that have made money in gold or just buying and selling on Facebook, garage sale stuff, flipping things, cars on the side, uh, people that are uh, self-employed doing landscaping, auto detailing, uh, different things like that. I mean, people have made some wealth, entrepreneurial, self-employed uh, people. I mean, you're, you're kind of limited unless you get lucky and you got a degree and you apply and you get into a medical field, a uh, lawyer or, you know, um, a, a, a management position with some company, uh, you know, you're in the, um, you know, you're in the high, you get a, you get a government job working for the county or city and you're up there now, you're crew manager, you're, you know, you're in the government, you got, you got, you really got it made. And then you got that pension and all that. So, you know, they've made wealth that way. So my life, I never really had any wealth. That's why I tell people, you know, when you retire at 62, a lot of people have made most of their money from when they retired at 62 to 70 than they ever did their entire life. I know I have because I, most of my life, I didn't work as much as I could have or made as much as I could have because I was basically semi-retired. I've been semi-retired because when I had my own business, after I got out of the car business, that was back, I got out of the car business in, um, started in like 75 and, and it was in it till um, 92, something like that. And then I got into my uh, advertising business around 92 or 93. So since 92 or 93, how old was I? If I'm 65 now and 24, 92, um, this is too difficult. 92, 2002, 2012, 2022, uh, 32 years ago, I would have been, hang on, hang on. Uh, 65, 55, 45, 42 years old. Since I've been a little over 40 years old, I have literally been semi-retired, uh, where I only worked um, a few days a week, a few hours a day. And then since 62, uh, when the pandemic came and put me out of my business, 
I could have started back, but I started doing YouTube. I, I've been even, you know, I don't know, I might be working more hours now. <laughs> I definitely got a prison job. But this has been the blessing that I've had. And during those years that I was working for myself, I played golf. I was much younger. I was single the entire time. I, I lived as a roommate. I, I never dated. I didn't have a girlfriend. I just, I, I, you, you want to know what I did? I, I read the Bible a lot. I watched a lot of stuff on TV, and I listened to a lot of things on the radio. I really did study the Word. I got into uh, my Christianity. I really did. I, 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 I went more than 10 years, twice in my life, sober before falling off the wagon and drinking again. And every time I did, it was right back to full on, you know. I never missed work or was obnoxious or, you know, threw up or passed out or staggered or got a DUI or I didn't go out to bars. I drank at home. But when I drank alcohol, and I, made, I got videos of, on, my, on my YouTube here, when I did drink wine and, and vodka. And I was doing my barbecue grilling when I lived over at Ted and Jolene's. And then I decided to give it up again. And for, for reasons different this time, more about my health and wanting to live out this wonderful life I'm enjoying uh, to the fullest and to not deteriorate any faster or any more than I want to be a Jack Lorraine. I hope to be an exception uh, to the rule and live a long, prosperous life. So I'm doing it for a lot of health reasons. Plus, I figure I really got away with it a lot by never getting a DUI. All the money I'm saving, too, on that booze. And, um, and on and on and on. That's another story. So, um, this life I'm living, I'm talking about it because... You know, when I shared and got millions of views talking about Social Security, a lot of people were really helped out by that. A lot of people were, you know, I never thought about it that way. All the money I'd leave on the table if I waited five more years just to get another few hundred bucks. And I could be doing a side hustle and quit this prison job and do this skill I have and make some money to, to supplement it. And, and then have this freedom. This life that's mine to live. And that's the main thing. Over all the money, over all the details we've been talking about, it's about you living. Because every day you hear about these people dying. Yeah, you only hear about the famous people, but people die every second. You know, people lose loved ones. People lose children, spouses, parents. And it's a very sad thing. But people die. And some people take a long time to die. Some people die suddenly. And some people's lives become very unfulfilling and very um, regretful that they didn't do what they wanted to do because a sickness came on them. Gizzards wore out. Dialysis had to be done. Diabetes started. A stroke happened. Can't, mobile, can't move as much. Started getting um, um, Alzheimer's and dementia, and um, and the, what's what's the other one that we where you um, the uncontrollable shaking that so many get too. And you say, oh well, you know, I'm I'm going to live forever. I don't think about dying, and when I die, I die. But when something like that happens, and you know, you get a heart attack, or you need a heart transplant or your, your energy level's low, you can't go to certain altitudes, you can't do certain activities. You have to give up the camper and the, the truck deal and you gotta get something that you can drive and it can't even be big or you can't even do it at all. You need to go into a home, you need convalescent care. And then you say, yeah, man, wow, oh, this, is, this is terrible, you know? It's very unfortunate, but I mean, you can say to yourself, I wish I could do it over. I wish I could be just out driving on a cross-country trip 
looking at the great, beautiful USA, mountains, farmland, desert, oceans, places you've never been. Maybe, t maybe go abroad. Maybe, they, maybe you want to go to Mexico. Maybe you want to live in the Philippines. So many things you could be regretful if you don't at least grab some things. And whatever it is, like I'm doing, that's attainable. I can't do just everything I want to do. I mean, I wish I could do a lot more than what I am choosing to do. I'm happy with these things. But if I had bigger finances, other opportunities, I would. I certainly would. I'd do it all. Wouldn't you? So don't live in regret, folks. You know, think about getting yourself in a position. And if your position is, I'm happy the way things are. I'm just going to work until I die. Uh, they can call the, uh, the funeral, the hearse, to pick me up at my job at my prison job, or um, I'm just going to stay in the sticks and bricks that I own outright. I'm going to get paid off in 10 more years. And I'm just going to sit there and die. And I'll just keep paying my insurance and my maintenance and putting new roofs on. And, and I'm just going to sit here and, and watch Fox News, CNN, you know, a Hallmark Channel. I'm going to um, just keep my old car. I don't drive much. Or I'll keep buying new cars. Um, you do you. If that's what you want to do, God bless you. But I think a lot of people that may find a failing health issue will have, I would, I would have so many regrets because I, I can't stand still now that if I don't go and do, if I don't buy that, that camper and have it, if I don't get that car so I don't have to put a hundred dollars a week of my traveling money into that gas tank of that truck and it's putting money back in to the car and I'm saving money. Do I need two vehicles? No. But because I don't have a home and I have all that money that people are spending for their utilities, a heavy electric bill too. Gas, like up in north, up north, uh, whatever they call that fuel they use for heating, um, streaming services, credit card debt, you know, loans, all these things. It afforded me to to do something different with my money, and so will I keep it? Well, for the foreseeable future, otherwise I will lose my tail, even with a great deal I got. Uh, so the only thing I wouldn't lose on right now, if I wanted to sell everything would be the camper. But if I sold everything and I got more than I really need to get from this camper, I could afford to take a little bit of the losses on the car and the truck and, and still come out where it's not too bad of a beat. It's still going to be a beat though. But I'm not going to do that because this is what I've created. This is what I want. This is where I'm at. I don't want those other ideas. I talked about it. I don't want land. I don't want a home. I don't want a condo. I want this. And I want those vehicles. That's what I want. And I want to pay cheap to live at so many places in this country that I can move my home to. You know, I can be in a high rent district or any district or districts where you can't be if you have a home with a home on wheels. And I got a truck with four wheel drive, they can yank it there too. Uh, but when I do want to chill out at a home base like I have here, and I just want to run around and go visit people, I run over and see my son on the other coast, run up to Georgia and see my daughter, go see my other friends in Georgia, other friends that I've made in YouTube that live in Tennessee or wherever, just go on my own and take a trip. I got a vehicle, that Honda, that was free. And every time I do something like that, puts money in my pocket that I didn't spend doing it this way with the camper. But other times it's going to cost more to do it with the camper and the fuel. But what I'm taking with me is my home. 
and I'm not buying a hotel room every night. And I can boondock. I don't have to pay even $25 or $50 for a campground. I have a generator. There's Love's Truck Stops. I don't need to put the slides out. I got two doors. One comes in, goes to my refrigerator, and these, these seats, and one go, another door back there goes into my bed. I don't need that part that, that, that slides in under my uh, closet. I can sleep diagonally. I don't need to put that slide out. And if I really want to live comfortably at a truck stop, I don't have to put these slides out all four feet. I can put them out a foot. I can put them out just a little ways just to give me a little pass so I can use one door. I got options, folks. And I want to share with you that I want you to think, what can you do? You're a single guy. You're a single gal. You're a couple. Think about what you can do to live a life in the future in America that's going to be a better America, a great America, uh, especially the next four years. We're going to change things back around. Some things are going to come down. There's going to be more opportunities. I'm excited about that, too. At first, I was worried. Now I'm, like 85 other million other people, I'm very optimistic about the future of our country, the direction, and what we're going to put back into our country, and what we're going to take out of this country. Put good ideas in, opportunities, jobs, money, low cost, high wages, more opportunities for you that are approaching Social Security age at 62, that you can get more side hustles, more opportunities to do things, to make some money. And you get to start over. I'm already from 62. I'm going to be 66. What is that? Three, four, five, six, four years of the, what did I say, 62 to 70? That's only eight years. I've already spent half of my, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going to be at 70 years old. I'm already feeling now. I'm already feeling it. What are you going to do at 70 years old? Are you going to get out here and, and hustle up and chain up this camper and, and drive it? And, and do all these things at 70, at 72, at 73? I don't know. I hope you can. So that's the, uh, that's the evening chat. Those were just things that kind of came to me that I'm thinking about, that I'm very grateful about. Uh, to God Almighty, I give all the glory to Him. You know, I was watching something the other day. Someone sent me a YouTube video of Donald Trump holding a Bible talking about we're never going to get cheap on God. We're never going to uh, not do what's good for our country. This is a God-blessed nation. We are judo ju ju judo ju Christian nation. And God bless this country. And we're going to put God back into our country. That's what we need. Religion and, and all these things that this woke and this other crapola that had people going. Now we all realize that that isn't America. That isn't the America we know. We're going to go back. And I'm very excited about it. And I'm getting the dessert in my life. I had plenty of years that I struggled. And although I wouldn't change a thing of my life, I've had a pretty good life. There was a lot of times where it was feast or famine. You know, I didn't have money for formula and Pampers one week, uh, raising children to, to now. I don't worry about such things as long as I stay within my, my means. And I want to encourage you to think about your future and do your own plan. But that's what I'm doing. These are some of the monies and the changes and what it costs and how it's really attainable. And you don't have to be a millionaire. You really don't. It, you don't have to be a 24 trailer, a 24 car, and a 24 truck. They can be 20s. They can be excellent, like brand new pre-owned deals and get even a better value. They can even be older. They were never used. Maybe you have the skill set to keep your cars going. Anything that happens, you understand about motors, internal combustion engines. You don't need a warranty, <laughs> you know? And then when you get to be 65, you get that insurance and you get that disadvantage plan, the free one. I am covered nationwide now 
and I am covered on anything that happens to me, uh, they're going to pay for it. And I have a small copay or an annual deductible, and if I can't pay it, we'll work it out. But I'm not going to pay four to six thousand dollars a year for insurance, medical insurance, when I can pay for all my insurances for three years um, on all my vehicles and my camper for what each year cost to take the supplement plan on Medicare. Now you do you, you got your big time money, you got your pensions and all kinds of cash and you like that, you do it, do it. But I go the way that I go and it's great. I am crushing it.